Welcome to the show, guys. I am super excited. We are talking about running back gems, something that's so precious in drafts, running backs. Not only that, we're talking about specific running backs that are gems. These are the guys that I think are going to give you amazing value for fantasy. They're decent value in drafts. You're going to want to target these guys. They're gems. They're precious stones. They're amazing. I have five of them for you. I love talking running backs. I know you guys do too as well. We're talking running backs. Now, another precious thing I'm going to give you, another gem that you can keep in your back pocket. So grab a pen right now. Use code FFC20 for Fantasy Football Council 20. FFC20. Every time you're hungry, guys, call Hooters or go to Hooters.com. Any order over $30, you can save $10 on it by using code FFC20. Go download the app, the Hooters app right now. Go to Hooters.com. I've left a link here as well below here on the YouTube channel. Guys, try their wings. Enhance that game-watching experience. Hooters.com, guys. Code FFC20. Save $10 on your order of $30 or more. Go do that right now. Or every time you're hungry, right? Sunday night, Thursday night football, Monday night football, Order Hooters, DM me, send me a picture of you eating Hooters. Love to see it, guys. The show is brought to you by Hooters.com, right? FFC20, go use that code. Now, let's dive into the show. We're talking running back gems. Let's get to it. All right, guys, welcome to the show. We are in full draft season. Make sure you guys get the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it below. Sleepers, breakouts, optimal players to draft in each round. Everything you guys need to crush your leagues, guys. Get the 16-round drafts, which again, I've linked it below. It'll help you guys crush your leagues. Video training is like having me at the draft with you. Use code TUBE20, you will crush your leagues. All right, guys? Now, let's dive into these five running back gems that I absolutely love and why I love them. It's all about, I could tell you I love a running back. I could say it, but I'm going to explain. I'm going to give you guys reasons why I love these guys for this season, why they're gems, Okay. And maybe I'm, I don't have full stock on all these guys. Like, I haven't got... There's a couple of these guys I don't have in one, you know, in my leagues. I didn't end up getting getting them. Because, again, they're gems. Someone else drafted them. But I'm going to mention them anyway. Maybe you guys can grab them. Because I've already drafted. I've got, like, three big leagues that I'm in. Love my teams. Confident. But I missed out on a couple of guys. I'll tell you who they are as well. All right, guys? So, subscribe to the channel. If you're, you know, if you're new to the channel, I know a lot of people watching the video that haven't subscribed. Subscribe for the outside-of-the-box thinking. Lion mentality. Again, the courses are below. The Patreon group, guys, Fantasy Frontlines. Direct access to me only in the Patreon group, Frontlines. Linked it below as well, Fantasy Frontlines. Also on my website under Programs. Get in, guys. Join the Frontlines. Exclusive access behind the scenes. Exclusive podcasts where I go up and above. All my links below, guys. Go check out all the links. There's a lot of value, guys, below. And that 16 rounds, oh, my God, amazing. Going to crush your legs, all right? So the first running back here, got to talk about him. Absolutely love him. I'm getting a lot of you know, kickback on this one, which is okay. I like kickback. The guy I'm talking about is Kenneth Walker, 5'10", 210 pounds out of Michigan State, right? Currently sitting, like, what, 36th on the Kinshipsis rankings? Seems like this guy is completely being slept on. The guy, again, 5'10", 210 pounds, drafted in the second round by the Seattle Seahawks, who have question marks at quarterback. They, they don't have a quarterback. I mean, they got Drew Locke, who's inaccurate. They got Geno Smith. They're desperate. They're hurting. They need a bright spot in that offense, and I believe Kenneth Walker is going to be it. He's going to be the starter. He's going to be the workload. Now, people are saying Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny had a decent little stint near the end of the season last year. I'm looking at his numbers here. I'm going to, I'm going to break this down and debunk this. Now, when you look at Rashad Penny, guys, he is the definition of years to wow us for not wow. He could have finished a season to save his life. 14 games year one in 2018. He played 10 games in year two, three games in 2020, and he played, what, like 10 games in 2021. Again, he came on strong near the end of last season. When I mean strong, I'm not even saying that. I mean, I'm using that word loosely, I guess. He had like, what, one good game week 17. We had 170 yards, 6.8 yards per carry, two touchdowns, Okay. That was, the, that was his biggest game. I mean, he came on strong there. But when he played the Rams in week, what, 15, he averaged what? Uh, what is it? 3.5 yards per carry that week, okay? 39 yards rushing. So when he played a real team, he did well. Now, he played Houston, right? Week 14 had himself a good game. He played Chicago in week 16, had himself a good game. He played Detroit in week 17, had himself a good game. And he played Arizona, right? So he had himself five... Good games, you know, you know, four good games out of five down the stretch. 
Okay. But again, years to wow us were not wowed. And this guy can't stay healthy. They got Rashad, you know, Rashad Penny, what, the first round back in what, 2018? First or second round? Yeah, first round pick, 27th overall. And since then, he's done nothing. If he was good, he would have passed Chris Carson, and he hasn't. He hasn't passed Chris Carson. Years to wow us were not wowed. Why would I trust him? Why, you know, they brought in Kenneth Walker, young dynamic, who was a workhorse in college. Kenneth Walker, 263 attempts, 1,636 yards, 18 touchdowns, 13 receptions, 89 for 89 yards, and one receiving touchdowns last year in college. This guy was a workhorse in college. This guy can get it done. He's young, dynamic. He's got upside. Hopefully, he's durable. He's a gem this year, and you can get this guy. I saw him as late as the 10th round, guys, in, in some mock drafts, but I would even go as early as the 5th round. Here's the deal with Kenneth Walker. You're going to get yourself a workhorse running back. No committee. I don't consider Penny a committee. I don't care if he says he's saying he's starting. Kenneth Walker is the guy. Unless Seattle's an absolute, you know, totally stupid, they wouldn't sit their second-round draft pick. They're going to run him. I imagine they're going to start Penny at the beginning of the year. And this is unbiased because I really don't like Penny. I don't like players that have done nothing their whole life, right? And then you've got a star, and then they're going to hinder that star from really shining. Forget it. Rashad Penny, trash player, done nothing. Like I said, three games in 2020. Okay, when you look at his touchdowns, guys, I'm going to tell you this stat, and you guys, I don't want to hear this Rashad Penny debate anymore. Five touchdowns in three seasons. That's all I got to say about Rashad Penny. That's all I got to say about Rashad Penny. I've had enough of this Rashad Penny talk. I've had it. I'm going to do a reel on this. I'm going to talk about this on my story mode. I don't care. I'm going to talk about it on my socials. I've had enough with Rashad Penny. The guy sucks. Walker, get him. And here's the deal. Get Walker. One or two rounds before you think he's going to get sniped in a, in a draft, okay? Love him. He's a gem. Love the value. Now, you don't again, you don't have to pay a fifth-round pick on him. He's going to fall. People are going to be stupid and draft for shot Penny first, but I love Kenneth Walker. He is a gem. Second guy here, I've talked about him before, Brees Hall, 6'1", 220 pounds, drafted by the Jets with early draft capital, and you know they moved up to get him. They love him. This guy had 41 touchdowns in two years. 41 rushing touchdowns in two years in college over the past two years. 253 attempts last year, 1,472 yards, 20 touchdowns, 36 receptions, 302 receiving yards, and three receiving touchdowns. He's an absolute beast, okay? We're talking about Kenneth Walker, right? Absolute beast. We're talking about Brees Hall, absolute beast. Brees Hall is coming off typically round three and four. Great value. Love the upside. I know they got Michael Carter there, but Michael Carter, if they believed in him, they wouldn't have drafted Brees Hall. Brees Hall obviously is going to be the starter there. I'm anticipating a minimum of 220 rushing attempts, 1,200 yards, and 10 touchdowns on the ground for Brees Hall. You're going to get him as a value. And both these guys should be considered running backs as part of a robust RB strategy. I'm not saying draft these guys as your RB1 or RB2. Like, I've got Kenneth Walker as an RB5 in one league. I've got, you know, Brees Hall. Actually, Brees Hall is the one I actually missed out on. I had to make a decision in round three in two leagues. Um, actually, in one league, it was a two-quarterback league. I ended up, I saw Brees Hall sitting there with Javante. I went, Javante might be a mistake, but I wanted that safe floor kind of guy on Javante. Brees Hall was a risk, and I had my running backs early. He, you know, this was a bonus. I wanted steady numbers. I, again, if I have other running backs that I feel steady and I want that upside, I should have went Brees Hall for upside, but I still wanted those safe, secure numbers of Javante. I missed out in another league. I ended up going Zeke in the third round because, again, I wanted safe numbers in that in that league as well. But Brees Hall, guys, tons of ceilings, sitting 20th on the consensus on the Kinship's rankings. Kenneth Walker sitting 36th on the Kinship's rankings amongst running backs. Insane value. Gems in your draft could be league winners here, right? Next guy here, number three, is Javante Williams. 203 attempts last year, four touchdowns, a fair split in attempts last year with Melvin Gordon, the pest who's coming back. I hope Melvin Gordon fumbles his way out of his job because I really can't stand the guy. He's good enough just to be a pest with Javante. Javante is a gem still because I really think that, you know, if you're looking at an RB2-3 on your team that's going to get you a floor similar to where I'm seeing Brees Hall. Again, I think Brees Hall is a bit of a higher ceiling. Now, Javante has a massive ceiling if Melvin just went away. Okay, but 1,200 yards similar, you know, 10, 10 to 12 touchdowns. I'm seeing around 220 attempts as a floor for Javante. I mean, he might be hindered on the touchdown aspect simply if Melvin Gordon gets the volume, but Javante Williams, an absolute gem. And again, I hope Melvin Gordon fumbles his way out of his job, and he's done that before. They should be starting Javante. I think they're just going to ride the hot hand. If he starts taking off and really fighting for it, man, he is just going to get more and more volume. They're going to run their best player, which is Javante. Melvin Gordon, he's got, what, one 1,000-yard rushing season? 
Javante is the future. You run him. And then this reminds me similar to the Marlon Mack and, and Jonathan Taylor situation. Taylor just needed Mack to go away. When Mack went away, Taylor shined. That's what's got to happen here. Melvin Gordon's got to go away, and Javante Williams is going to shine. He's an absolute gem. I still love him. Again, Melvin Gordon's going to be a pest, all right? Next guy here is going to be an absolute gem. By the way, Javante is sitting 13th on the consensus rankings. Next guy here sitting 47th on the consensus, getting first team reps, guys, in training camp. Love the upside. Love the ceiling out of Texas A&M. We're talking 6'1", 215-pound Isaiah Spiller, guys. Last year in college, 171 attempts, just over 1,000 yards with 1,011, six rushing touchdowns, 25 receptions. Yes, he can catch the ball and a receiving touchdown. So when I look at Isaiah Spiller, I look at a guy who isn't as dynamic as Brees Hall, but is in a position to really shine. Now, Eckler, obviously not a true full workhorse running back. They've been looking for a workhorse running back. Eckler is not it. He had a good season last year, but that's his best season like ever. He will never hit those numbers. And what's sad is that the mainstream consensus and the consheeps is everybody's telling you, Draft Eckler as a top five, top 10 running back. It's absolutely ludicrous because here's the deal. Let's break down Eckler's numbers here. And again, I'm not just talking out of my, you know, out of my whatever, the air here. I'm trying not to swear. If you look at Eckler's numbers, okay, in his first three years of his career, okay, actually, let's do four years of his career. When you look at his rushing touchdowns, three, six, uh, eight, nine rushing touchdowns. Okay, rushing touchdowns in four years. He had 12 last year. Okay, receiving, yeah, you know, he did well in receiving touchdowns. I mean, he had two in 2020 because he was bagged up to play 10 games. There you go. It proved he's not a workhorse running back. He's just getting banged up. You know, he had eight receiving touchdowns and three and three, right? He had six receiving touchdowns in two years when they first started, right? But if you look at last year, he tied his receiving, you know, touchdowns with 2019 with eight, right? So when I look at Eckler, this was his pinnacle year. And what's sad is like he still he's never had one 1,000 yard rushing season. He had 911 last year. This guy is not a workhorse running back. He doesn't get the attempts. He peaked at 203 attempts or 206 attempts last year. He's not a workhorse running back. You know, they brought in Isaiah Spiller. He's going to be getting work. So Isaiah Spiller late, give him to me. You know, he had two 1,000 yard rushing seasons in college. Spiller did. So. He's a workhorse. He's going to be a goal line vulture. Love the value. Love the upside of Spiller. Getting first team reps. He's there for a reason. They drafted him because they're going to use him. They're going to use Isaiah Spiller, guys. I don't care what you say. Eckler is going to take a significant decline this year. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. He's kind of a weirdo, too, because the year that I said he was going to bust, which was 2020, he busted. And then he came back, had himself a good year last year, and I said he's going to bust again. I was wrong. So we're both one for one. You know, he had blocked me in 2020. And then all of a sudden, like months ago, I noticed that he unblocked me. How did I notice? Because people were sending me videos of his training. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Austin Eckler had me blocked. And then all of a sudden, I'm not blocked. I'm like, cool. So then out of respect, I ended up following his page. I'm like, cool, man. I appreciate your respect to the fantasy football community. And then somebody sent me another video of him. And I'm not creeping his page at all. Someone sent me a video of him lifting weights. And it said post unavailable. I went to click. I'm like, who is this? They're like, well, it's Austin Eckler's page. I go to Austin Eckler's page, and he's blocked me again. The guy is a weirdo. I didn't do anything to trigger another block. I didn't, you know, nothing. So the guy is just a straight weirdo. I don't get him. I'm rooting for Spiller here to, you know, but I think Spiller is going to be a gem in late rounds. Stash him. It's not going to hurt you. Let's put it this way. I'm not spending a first-round pick on Eckler, but I will stash a Spiller, okay? Isaiah Spiller on your radar. And the last guy here, safe and boring and reliable, I'm going to, just say he's a gem because I love the value. Sitting 17th on the consensus. I mean, Spiller, 47th, great value. Javante, 13th. Brees Hall, 20th. Kenneth Walker, 36th amongst running backs. But this guy is Zeke Elliott. Sitting 16th on the consensus rankings, guys. 16th on the consensus on the consensus rankings. What a steal. I mean, his ADP is starting to slide up since Jerry Jones said that they got to use him as a focal point of that offense. But Zeke Elliott, absolutely love him, guys. Absolute steal this year. Great value. I mean, the guy finished seventh in PPR amongst running backs last year. He's going to be the well, or you know workhorse running backs. I believe Jerry Jones, and I believe the beat writer, and I believe my gut feeling. This guy's going to have a safe floor of 220 rushing attempts, 10 touchdowns, and at least 1,200 yards. Safe, solid RB2-3 on your roster. Guys, running backs are hard to find, especially good ones. They're going to perform on a high level and stay relatively durable. This guy played with a partially torn PCL last year and still finished top seven. He's going to get an increase in workload. He's going to start eating again. I'm not sold on Tony Pollard. Zeke is the guy. He's the best player on their team. He's going to eat, okay? He's a locker room guy, hero. He's a veteran. 
He is the guy. Zeke Elliott will continue to eat. I like him, and I love the value this year, particularly an absolute gem. So there you have it, guys. Five running back gems. If you guys want all the gems, all the sleepers, all the breakouts, get the 16-round draft solution. Use code TUBE20. Save yourself 20%, guys. And again, that code, write it down, FFC20 for Hooters. All right, guys? Head on over to Hooters right now or pick up delivery, whatever, order, and I've left a link here below. Hooters.com, download the app. FFC20 is the code to save $10 on an order of $30 or more. All right, guys, I appreciate you. Subscribe, thumbs up. We'll talk soon. Fantasies around the corner. I'm excited.